So it's going to be some encouragement for you to innovate. That's it. Nothing more than that, right? It's going to be simple talk where you'll understand where and all I go ahead and I can innovate. Innovation and you. This is the title that I have taken. Let's go ahead and see how exactly we can innovate. We'll start with the simple point. We always have this question, why, where, how, all these questions come around when we go around with innovation as the major point. I always get this question wherever I go and deliver talks. Sir, how do we innovate? Where do we get the problem statements? Which can be classified as innovation? Innovation has to be huge or small, what's it? This is the kind of questions that we keep on getting. But innovation is unavoidable. We have to innovate and there is no option. Innovation is something that we have to adapt to. Innovation actually fuels the progress and most importantly, not only for the business, not only for the technology, but also for the society, innovation is inevitable. We have to go ahead and innovate. And innovation definitely transforms lives. I'll show you some of the examples, phenomenal examples that we have worked on, that my students have worked on, that the community that I know have worked on, and that will certainly motivate you. That's what I want you to know. And when you innovate, if the innovation becomes affordable, that's a point I would like to stress here. Sir, I'm innovating, but it costs you lakhs and lakhs of rupees or few million dollars. That's not going to be acceptable innovation for people who are normal users of it. So whenever we think of innovation, I think it's our responsibility to make it really, really affordable. And that is where I'm going to come. What can be done to bring in affordable innovation? That's the thought process that I want to inculcate for the day today. Now, many of us will have still this question in our mind. What is innovation? What is invention? Can we classify invention and innovation quickly? Thomas Alva Edison, first time when he did something which can work like an electrical bulb that he named that way, that's an invention. That's a clear invention that he has made. But the same thing that has come uh, later on, that is recent past, we've got the LED lights, LED bulbs, LED lamps, all those things, say by Philips, that is innovation. So please understand, if you are able to modify something which is existing and if you can add value which can become more usable, more affordable, more friendlier, more value added, that's innovation. Very simple. The electrical bulb which is transformed to LED bulb is a very simple innovation that I can refer you with. So please, if you have an idea that has been already an invention but you are going to add value to it, go ahead with it. That's an innovation. So you may not stop yourself from thinking that, can this be an innovation? Can this get qualified to be an innovation? That kind of question should never be on your mind. And that's something I would like to stress here. Affordable innovation, I stress it, I repeat it, because this is something that I would like to uh, give you as engineering students. Please understand, any project, any product that you build, if there are no takers, it's no longer valuable. We need to really build things in such a way that it has takers. And it's your responsibility to make sure that you identify takers and then you build the product. So I'll show you some very simple examples that can really let you understand things better. And this question is to be definitely answered. I already have given you a glimpse of what it is. Where do we identify the problems? I can ask a simple question to all the people sitting here in this hall. Is there anybody in this hall who can say that, sir, I do not have any problem at all with me. I am all problem free. Is there anybody in this hall who can say that? Do we have no challenges at all? If you, I think if you have no challenges, you are not going in the right path. We may have a number of challenges, we may have a number of problems that are surrounding us. And please understand, if you are able to identify a problem of yours, and if you find the same problem as problem of many other people, and if it does not have technical solution, you as engineers can give an innovative solution for it, and you are already an entrepreneur there. You are already an innovator there. So please understand, identifying problem within self is also going to be very helpful for you to identify if the same problem is occurring with similar other people and you can bring out solutions. It's not that you should build only rocket science level content, you can make a very simple innovation that's going to solve the problem of so many. I'll give you a very simple example. It is Mohan's day today, so I wanted to first start with a woman respecting her. Uh, she is Jayalakshmi, she is no more. Uh, she, she was 86 when she passed away. I'll just tell you the story behind her. She was living with her son uh, in a very dynamic house where son and family lives in a separate room as usual and this lady was living in a different room. By night around 12, 12.30, this lady wanted to use the restrooms and she went, she went in for it and she fell down. Uh, she broke her spinal cord in a couple of places and she had a severe injury in her back head as well. But it was not noticed until 4.30 in the morning because nobody was awake and nobody could hear the sound as well. So the bathroom fall has resulted almost in a death there. So next day morning, she was taken to the hospital, she was rushed and three or four surgeries happened. It was all terrific panic around the family for her. 
and she passed away after three days. And then I was part of it. I'll tell you who she is. Uh, then I went through the complete understanding of why this is happening. Is this only within the family, or is it a major problem? Then I understood that World Health Organization has got a website, web page, where you've got a false statistics completely pushed in. I was taken aback. I repeat, I was taken aback. You can see that this is the second major cause for death or injuries among the people, particularly above 60. This is the major cause, and this was conveyed by not me. This is conveyed by World Health Organization. And most importantly, 6.8 lakh people die almost every year because of fall and the majority contributor is a bathroom fall. Some of you would have had the same story in your family or you could have seen it in your friend's family. Fall in bathroom is a major crisis. But then what happens is 37.3 million people also get severe injuries. That's a serious number. But then came the idea after cremating her, we wanted to do something and we built a very innovative solution which can cater to the bathroom fall. You know the piezoelectric property, right, of the material. You must have studied it in your plus two or eleventh standard, I believe. When you apply impact to it like this, you are applying impact to it like this, it gives output voltage. We completely piezoelectrified the bathroom. And when you stand on one tile, it will give output voltage only from one tile. But if I fall, I'll cover four or five tiles at least and it will give me output voltage from five tiles. You cannot have cameras inside bathroom, you cannot have more complicated stuff inside bathroom, but this can give you output voltage indication from five tiles which will alert the people in the hall or any other room saying that there is a fall in the bathroom. Simple. And this was built. Sir, what happened afterwards, sir? We built it further, further, further and we made a wearable SQL parallel and we could do the indoor localization perfectly. 96% accuracy. Sir, what happened after that? I'll tell you. The team has gone to Harvard University and we have won the 2019 World Harvard Hack Harvard competition from India. We represented India and we have won that for a simple product. This did not cost us more than 2,500 rupees to 3,000 rupees. And this is a startup now. Now where it started, it all started with this old lady who passed away because of the fall. And it was my problem, my lady. She is none other than my own grandmother. I saw her suffering. I wanted to do something. It started with me. And then where it went, it went to Harvard. It is now a startup where people are working for this. Right? So innovation can start even in this kind of inspiration. I was very upset with their loss. But that's not the way you should think. You should obviously think about coming out of it and what's the lesson that we can take from them. That's what I have done. That's what my students have done. You can see the people standing over there. They are my students. So they carry a whole lot of uh, credits in getting all these things implemented. It's a very simple thing. You have to very powerful thing. Innovation can be very simple. Your 10 standard book can help you with a lot of innovation, simple ideas, because the physics and chemistry comes over there, right? It's going to be very simple for you. Well, how many of you drive two wheelers here? Almost everybody. How many of you take mobile phones when you are driving? I think some of you will definitely do. I'll talk about it and you have a lot of space to innovate there. And this is a real scary note. I'm not threatening you, this is scary. I'm not just threatening you, I'm warning you, in fact, you should not pick up mobile phones when you are driving. See the statistics that I'm going to present you, that's very really scary. The Econ Chronicle says that the road mishap deaths high among the teens using mobiles, right? And we have a statistic, 1.68 lakh death in 2022 because of road accidents. And one of the major causes is using mobile phone. It is listed, it's officially recorded. And there are many unofficial cases which could have gone without recording as well. So think of the numbers. And then finally you see, 8 die every hour in road accidents, speeding and mobile phone usage is the main reason. Why do we use it? People still use it, but there are some people who definitely need it. I really empathize the people who are delivering the pizza, the burger, the food, all those things because they do not have time, really as a luxury to deliver it at their own convenience after inquiring where the house is. They go to every new house every now and then, right? They may not know the location. So they, they do not have the luxury of stopping, asking an auto driver, Anna, where is the house? They do not have that luxury because if they deliver food late, their five star rating will come down and people have a problem there. So, they take the phone, they keep the map on, they keep seeing it. They need navigation. And really it's a problem. If they pick up phone and if they see it or if they look into it and if they drive, they cause damages to others and they self-damage themselves as well. That's majority. So what can we do? Very simple. There is an innovation which has come out from a team which I mentored. They said that, sir, why do you pick up the phone out? Don't pick the phone out. Keep the phone in. Make a glove for them and send the data from the phone to the glove and let the glove be the indicator. I can go left based on the map's update, if the left indicator is on, if the left side turn has to be taken, the left glove will be flickering and if the right glove is flickering, it means you need to take right. All the direction updates, whatever comes from maps can really be sent in here and if there are multiple lifts one after another, 
whichever left is, whichever turn we have to take when we go nearby that, there will be a vibrator module that can add and that will really let you know this is the left that you need to go. And more than this, many of us do not put indicators. Many of us, either we were in bad mood or we are in no mood to really use it up. We see that quite often in Chennai roads, right? Many of us do not really care for indicator. We need to do predictive analytics to see if this guy is going to put indicator. This can really get automatic indicator done. This is done. This product is done. It will cost you around 2000 rupees for you to get that completely implemented. A simple innovation for everybody. How did I do it? How did this thought process come to me? Very simple. I have seen an accident very close because of mobile phone usage. So whenever you see a problem, whenever you think that the problem has got no solution, I repeat, if the same problem is problem for many other people and if you can bring a technical solution, you are an innovator. Nothing more is required. Just open your eyes and keep your thought process really open so that you can identify problems. Can innovations be simple? Sir, some of these are complex, sir. You may need time to do it. I'll show you some very important and easy to uh, think of innovations which are really very simple. Samuel D. Fay, you all know it, right? Paper clips. It is one of the most sold products, would you agree? It is one of the most sold products, such a simple innovation. Coming to the next one, if you see very closely, sticky notes. You know the funny guy, funny story behind this sticky notes? Actually, it was not designed to be uh, very light in sticking. It is not very strong in sticking, right? It's actually super loose in sticking. It was designed to be a super uh, adhesive which should be very strong. But unfortunately, when Dr. Spencer Silver designed it, it went as a one that can go ahead and get stick so many times instead of it sticking very strongly once. He made it as an innovation. That's what we are using. Every table in the corporate now has got sticky notes. Innovation can come even from a mistake, but you should have the ability to identify that this is an innovation, that's fine, it has come because of a mistake, I'm okay with it, I have a market, I have users, I have people, right? Simple. The next one is going to be very, very interesting. Her name is uh, Miss Maya Seifel. The one who designed the breastfeeding dress is this lady. She deserves an amazing amount of respect. She was in a very cold region in US. She was not able to lift the dress and feed the baby and it was terribly cold. She has to also expose her top part of her body. She designed this. She sketched this breastfeeding dress and that is an innovation. How many millions of people are using now? All of us would have seen this, right? Our mother, our sister, our people, friends who are feeding, all those people, we have seen that they are undergoing this tremendous trouble. But this lady has taken it to a different level where we were able to get something very, very innovative out of her. This is the thought process, innovation. The next one is going to be very interesting. How many of you have got bigger bikes here? like about 350cc, 300cc, I don't have that one by the way, I have severe backache. If you have that bike and if I tell you that there is no side stand facility available for this bike, 90% of you would not buy that bike. You will say, I am sorry, I would not buy that bike. This is the simplest of innovation, side stand, right? So innovation need not be really complex. The sprinkler, the water sprinkler in the garden is such a simple innovation. And I will have a rod in between so that it sprinkles properly, distributing the water evenly to all the directions. So innovation need not be really complex. The door stopper, the stopper that we all have at home is a very simple innovation. Somebody's thought went in and it's a patent, right? So the safety pins that we all have at home, our people are wearing it. 90% of the women definitely will have it right in hand right now. Safety pin is an innovation. So innovation need not be complex. Please understand, innovations must be simple and it should be affordable. Now see this, I'll tell you one final story before I go on completing my talk. One fine evening, I and my dad, we were driving in the two-wheeler and normally dads never allow sons to drive the bike and my dad was no different. He never trusted me when I drive. So he was driving and uh, the helmet has a, a proper shield, right? We never use that shield, we lift the shield. And he did the same thing, he did not have a spectacle as well. A small insect came and fell into his eye. Many of you would have definitely had this experience of insect falling into eye. If you have eyes, definitely would have had this experience. Now coming to the point, we are all born doctors, okay? Immediate self-medication, that's the biggest blunder we all do. He went to home, he inserted this eye into water, a cup of water. He did a couple of times like this, some magic. And then he lifted the upper lid, did that tuck tuck twice. Lower lid, tuck tuck twice, finished. He said, I'm fine. I said, Appa, this is not fair, let's go to doctor. No, no, we can't spend money unnecessarily. Next day morning, his eyes was this big. See the size, it was, it was swelling like anything. And then we had to go to a doctor. Where the doctor found out that one of the legs of the insect is still there inside the eye. See, the insect size itself is small. One of the legs of that insect is still there inside. They had to undergo a procedure for about 45 minutes to get that out. When I came back, 
we have a patient ready with us now insect intrusion avoidance with helmet that's all awesome. 0 to 20 heads you know it right 19 heads or 20 heads we keep insects cannot come close up to you in childhood we must have studied all these simple so if you see something funky like this also if you can innovate that's also part of it we can take it up there is nothing wrong right keep your eyes open that's what i'm trying to convey you see things see what's happening i see a problem the problem needs a solution i am an innovator you need not build it immediately, but you can start thinking, identify if we have products in that area, do we have solutions in that area, can we make it more affordable, right? It is not with respect to if it is complex or easy, it is with respect to how do you start thinking. I want you to think in that way and that's the major take that I have for the day. And I would like to conclude this with a very positive note for you. Innovation can be small or big. There is no simple innovation by the way. There is no inferior innovation I mean by the way. Every innovation that you do is definitely superior because it was not there already. That feature was not there. You are the one who created it. You own it. You realize that you have done it nicely. So don't have a feel that, don't have an inferiority complex that this is such a small innovation. In that case, Mia Sefa would not have done that. In that case, we would not have gotten the sticky notes. It was a result of an error. Right? No innovation is really small. No innovation is really, uh, really inferior to any other innovations. So innovation is big. Only thing you need to understand is your innovation should be impactful. There must be takers. It must be affordable. All these points you should remember. There should be takers. There should be afford affordability connected to it. It must create an impact. And finally, keep your eyes open. See things all around. I am certain. We will have a lot of problem statements found out every day, every now and then. And one of the problem statements can even change your life. One of the problem statements can bring a solution through you and you can become an entrepreneur. You will be noticed. And that's what is innovation. Innovation has got the power of bringing you to the top. And only thing is, be ready for it. And with that, I conclude my talk.